Hi everybody, I'm Jenny. I'm here with the Edge <laughs> Treatment Center. We are live, it's four o'clock on Friday. Very, very excited. Today we have this amazing man on the show, Jeremy Jackson. How are you? I'm super good. Thanks good. for having me on. Thanks for joining us. I'm really happy to be a part of it. I'm, I, I can't even tell you how excited I am. I've been so nervous like the last two weeks. Like, now is, you're is he, me all is up. What is, he, is he gonna come? Is, is he not gonna <laughs> now come? Now you're making me nervous. Texting you, confirming, <laughs> hey, really excited, you're coming, right? Like, making sure you're gonna come. Actually, on the way over here, I was reading through your text, I'm like, she is very organized. I really <laughs> appreciate it. She told me where to park, I found the parking easy, I yeah. followed the instructions step by step. I was like, she's really on top of her stuff, so yeah. thank you for that. Well, thanks for coming, I really appreciate it. Little did I know it was because you thought I wasn't gonna make it. No, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't all <laughs> that, kidding. it wasn't all that. But um, I think you're amazing, your story is amazing. Um, I've kind of followed on social media and, and um, in TV and film and television, kind of where you come from and, and what you've done and, and your journey through recovery and health and fitness and all these different things. And I just thought it'd be really impactful to have you here and kind of share your journey um, yeah. and, you know, through addiction, through mental health and, and just get to know you and understand what you went through. Um, so I'd love to take it back, like way back to the beginning. Sure. So you started acting, you said at six years old. Yeah. So tell me about that. How did that even start? Well, you know, my mom was a single mom um, and, uh, you know, we were on like low income housing and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And she had to attend a certain amount of uh, community college in order to like stay on the program, see, right? Yeah. And that was out here? Yep. Okay. Orange Coast College. And, okay. uh, you know, she happened to see up on the bulletin board like child agent you know do you want to get your kid into acting thing just one of those little no ripple number off. yeah so i had always just been a ham i was always performing in front of everybody i was always wanting to entertain sing dance wherever i went so it just it happened like that you know and that agent little did we know because my mom's not in entertainment we were didn't know anything about the entertainment industry yeah. you know um but that agent was like the agent for like the kids from Saved by the Bell, the kids from Lassie. Wow, um, and that was just on an ad. The Olsen school. twins, Full wow. House, like they, it was a really big time kids agent specifically. Yeah. So yeah. it was kind of just like lightning in a bottle. Uh huh. Divine intervention yeah. from Meant way back be. then. See in my head, I just assumed that you had this background where someone was an actor and they got you into it and <laughs> wasn't it at all, huh? Nope, so nope. what was that like as a child being an actor? Uh, did you go to school? Were you homeschooled? You know, uh, school was really tough for me. So uh, I was born with like some learning disabilities, uh, dyslexia. They, they called it GLD, gifted learning disabled. So I was really advanced in certain areas wow. and I was like way behind in other areas. Um, I qualified for gate and like take me away from my school all day and i qualified for special day like going the little trailer on the field all day they didn't know where to put me um wow. and i was so i got in a lot of fights and and um you know i my social skills were really high but my like academics it just didn't interest me like it wasn't fun for me i wanted to have fun you know mm -hmm. yeah and uh you know back then there wasn't a lot of like various learning you know uh uh, you know, now they teach kids how they best respond to education, whether mm -hmm. it's hands-on, experiential, you know, mm -hmm. now you have options. Back then, yeah. they didn't really have options yet. Yeah. So I just channeled that into entertainment, singing, dancing. I practiced my dance moves all day. I practiced, you know, lip syncing all day, putting on costumes and outfits. I was uh -huh. just very passionate about it. It's something that I love to do. Yeah. And so it was undeniable for my mom when she just did that. and called an agent and I show up the sandy you know tan kid from Newport Beach and <laughs> um, I felt like an adult I acted like an adult so yeah when you know producers or directors would meet this little kid that would like look him straight in the eye and give him a firm handshake and talk to him like a grown-up they were like what's Whoa. up kid yeah so I got a lot of jobs because of that and I bet I ended up working so much by the time I was supposed to start fourth grade um, I was missing too much school so I basically just got home teachers and mm -hmm. um, homeschooling and different onset tutors and stuff like that. I see. Do you have brothers and sisters? One sister, yeah. One sister? She's younger than me. Okay. Bit. Is she in film and television too? Nope, or? not at all. Totally different path. She's like horticulture, you know, botany. She was actually, she's really, really smart. Um, she was getting into like uh, being a 
gene counselor for like people that are going to get married to tell them what kind of babies they're going to have. Oh, wow. Yeah, a like gene counselor. Gene, genome counselor. Yeah. Intimidating. Um, yeah. <laughs> she's super smart and uh, not, not so much of a out there type person. Was your mom like you? No, my mom's super shy. My mom's got, my, you know, my mom's got social anxiety and uh -huh. um, she's very quiet and, uh, you know, doesn't like to be around a lot of people or loud noises and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But, mm -hmm. you know, it, her and I just kind of teamed up, you know, yeah. she would read me my lines so that I could memorize them because uh -huh. the words moved around on the paper for me, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Huh. So as a child going into that, looking back now, do you feel that you were um, like really disconnected from, from a typical childhood? Did you have childhood friends and do normal things like birthday parties and swimming lessons and things like that? Or was it more of the other side of like being on set? Yeah, well, I got a little taste of everything. You know, my mom put me into swimming lessons when I was mm -hmm. a little kid and surfing lessons and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I really like had a hard time with like other kids um, just like the communication capacity and or what they were talking about or interested in um, didn't really like vibe with me you know so yeah I was always kind of felt like an outcast I think that comes hand in hand with being an addict alcoholic right you know? yeah it's pretty common um, but for me I had some other some some other things in the mix there mm -hmm. um, you know like even in kindergarten like I was like wiping boogers off kids nose and tying their shoe for them like what's going on who's running the show you know like that's, yeah. that was just that type of person you were that type of person yeah. yeah it reminds me a lot of myself and and at the time i couldn't realize it but i can as an adult you know where where different learning disabilities adhd dyslexia whatever it may be accompanied with like this underlying um illness what's the purpose disease, of life Why all this here? stuff you know addiction <laughs> yeah. like all these things like we don't we don't realize it but we act it out in different ways and i was the same way i i didn't i didn't do well in a lot of situations and emotionally i felt uncomfortable and awkward you know back yeah. then um, but i didn't really understand why yeah so for you when you were when you were a kid uh preteen emotionally could you identify with how you were feeling or? definitely not definitely, definitely not. not but yeah you know my er earliest memories were really like crippling pain uh, and just a lack of ability to understand what was the purpose of any of this life stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, just like you were talking about, that's why I discovered like people pleasing, you know, yeah. approval, yeah. you know, if that's why I jumped right into that presumed spouse syndrome mm -hmm. be the man boom 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 yeah i can make the coffee i'm two years old i'm making my mom coffee right, I'm, you right. know get doing doing that stuff um and then the approval performance based approval right, the harder right. i work the better i do the yeah. more i'll be loved and the more i can feel like i'm a part of this collective chaos we yeah. call life and that totally makes sense when you say crippling pain what does that mean i just can remember laying in bed like like with a sore throat crying, like life hurts, mm -hmm. you know, just like, <laughs> like, you know, don't like kids. I'm not allowed to do this. I'm not allowed to do that. I can't touch this. I can't touch that. This kid punched me for no reason. They, they call me Jeremy dumb because I can't read in class. And, you know, I can't, I have to go to bed. Like, I just hated everything. Everything seemed like it was out to get me, Yeah. you know? And, you know, that's really, I where I discovered chemical dependency, mm -hmm. honestly, was, you know, my mom would say, oh, don't touch that. Don't, this is dangerous, you know, don't mm -hmm. do that. So in my head, I was like, ooh, there, there must, that must be like a secret that adults keep to right. not feeling the way I feel. Yeah. I definitely remember feeling that. And how old were you when you started two, oh, feeling that? One or two. Okay, so as far back as you can remember. As far back as you I can remember. You were an addict as far back as you yeah. can remember. So yeah. I would take Comet and bleach and, and Pine Sol and facial toner and anything I could get my hands on mm -hmm. that was supposed to be Don't Touch Dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I would like put a little towel under the door and I'd mix them all together. I was literally mixing different concoctions with different portions of each to see which one was going to unlock this yeah uh, ability to fit in like yeah. sometimes it'd melt the tupperware right you right, know right, get yeah. all hot and bubble up uh-huh um and I, I stuck a 
bobby pins and knives and forks in every single outlet in mm -hmm. the house you know mm -hmm. i was on a feverish search for what i was told i'm not supposed to do that i'm really supposed to do mm -hmm. to fit in absolutely okay. no it makes total sense did you do that with with friendships and stuff that you did have? Did you kind of test people and push their buttons and try to get a reaction, even if it was negative, just like doing those things, you still did it just to kind of try to- For sure, yeah, yeah for sure. Like yeah. try to be really bossy or try to be extra nice, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I lock kids in my room, I like force them to stay, you know, like it didn't want, codependent, didn't want to be alone, didn't yeah. want them to have to leave, all yeah. that stuff, all that, everything just seemed like it was out to get me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so as you went on and, from that. And candy, and, and sugar, Candy, yeah. okay, before we move yeah, on, candy. Yeah, so yeah. that was a huge thing for me, and I yeah. realized at a very young age there's something seriously wrong with me because yeah. I used to get $20 a week allowance, right? And I lived in Canada, and there was this little street little well not street it was like a little trail behind my house I went to this little corner store mm -hmm. and i would get that twenty dollars and i would run up That's to that corner store. That's it was a, a lot yeah, yeah. back then it was yeah. a lot. run up to the corner store and i would buy like remember those little well they still have them they're like keys the sours it's like a little ring uh, yeah 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 of course yeah yeah. Ring pops. yeah, so I would buy the whole entire container that they would keep in the back. They'd bring them out and you'd yeah. like take the little tongs and get one. Just get the whole thing. I'd buy $20, I'd have the container <laughs> and I'd run all the way home and I would eat it, all of it. And, and I knew like something, yeah. something is definitely mm -hmm. not right mm -hmm. here. But yeah, I totally get it with the candy. Yeah, we're sick um, I'm yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so moving on from that, so you're doing some jobs and then you landed a really big job and that's yeah. Baywatch. Yep. How old were you when you started that show? Uh, I was 10 years old when I got Baywatch. I was nine when I originally um, tried out for it, but you know, whatever, it was close to my birthday. Yeah. Um, we started filming at 10. I had done about 30, 60 actually commercials before that, a couple movies. Oh wow, that's um, a lot, 60 commercials. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't even want to go to the Baywatch audition. I was like swimming in the pool with my friends. Yeah. I was like, you got to really get us with the Knight Rider. Like, he's like your idol, you uh -huh, know? Yeah. And he really was. I grew up watching that show religiously. So I was like, okay, I'll go. And I took a nap in the car because we live in Orange County, drove up to LA and it's mm -hmm. hot and I'm sleeping. And I, my mom parked really far away so that she would, she chased me. She like ran after me to That's get hilarious. my blood pump in yeah, and like yeah. get me flush in the face. Cause <laughs> yeah. I'll, yeah um so yeah that's like the kind of the memory i have of going in there i did a really good job did it did a you know multiple uh callbacks and everything yeah, I and, bet. you know it's just what was that addition what did they have you do for that uh well, it was actually a scene where i had to cry with david and everything oh, wow. it was a really big scene um and uh david i had this conversation with david Hasselhoff. he came to my 40th birthday party the other happy day. birthday thank by you, the way thank you he surprised me and showed up he, and he's like ah you you said i picked you up uh, to see which kid was the lightest and i'm like you did he's like no i didn't but <laughs> it was like me and uh and gosh what's his name the kid from <laughs> the guy the guy from uh like uh, Inception and oh. Great Gatsby, all those amazing movies. Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio. Oh, okay. It was like basically between myself and Leonardo DiCaprio, and I think I was a little lighter than him at the time. And they had just fired wow. this other kid because he grew up, and like went through puberty when they were off, and he came back. He was really big. David wanted a kid he could pick up and throw over his shoulder real, real easy, and look like a that's adorable strong guy. So oh. that was kind of the the final decision. I happened to be lighter than. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Again, divine intervention. Yeah. That's crazy. So and then the show went on for how many seasons? Well, I did about 11, accumulatively 11. It was nine seasons as a regular. We came back, I did something in, in Hawaii with them and we came back and did like a TV movie. So r really 11 years I worked with those people. That's amazing. Yeah. How was that experience as a whole? I mean, you know, uh, it's really, it's just like anything else in life. When you, when you boil it down, there was good times, there were bad times, and it just kind of ends up leveling out to being whatever the heck it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't look back at any of my life and say, you know, that was the worst chapter of my life or that was the best chapter of my life. Yeah. Because the pitfalls and, and the heights and the valleys kind of all, all balance out, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you learn from it and you can, you know, not freak out, but it, it was, 
it was just you know meant to be I had a lot of fun I made a lot of mistakes I made a lot of money I got to travel the world mm -hmm. um, you know recorded two albums and five singles and I, I really I guess the the coolest takeaway is when I was growing up kind of idolizing Michael Jackson and Elvis Presley and seeing these men on stages that could control just masses of people like mm -hmm. have people weeping and passing out I was like you know, as an <laughs> as yeah. an addict, you're like, yeah. must have that power. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> must have. I, I, I must do this. I must make people bow to me and <laughs> pass out. I must make girls show me their breasts and, <laughs> and love me so much they cry. Uh, and I did it, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, manifestation is super duper real. I didn't know anything about that. acting. I didn't yeah. know it was a job or a career. Mm -hmm. I just saw these entertainers who had something special coming from inside of them, mm -hmm. shining outwardly, coupled with skill set and talent um, that was refined, you know, that that blew people away and mm. I wanted to do that so that. bad and I just saw that and I practiced that and yeah. I envisioned that and it happened it you know happened, yeah so that's kind of the coolest takeaway from mm. all of that what did you learn the most about yourself through that process <sighs> man the most is tough there's a lot you know one of them I just mentioned you yeah. know that the that, that if you see it and you believe it you can't achieve it um, but at what cost is is my 40 year old addition to that but mm -hmm. at what cost at what cost you know because i've beat myself up and and made a lot of mistakes or a, a lot of these things that i wanted or i thought i wanted so bad r retrospectively when you match them up with what it cost me what it took what i had to sacrifice was it really worth it um and you know that you know i hate to say it on camera but money holes and clothes you know, you can't, mm -hmm. you can't take it with you, you can't. and it's not going to make you any happier. That life is really an inside job because I did make millions of dollars. I did travel the world. I had supermodel girlfriends. I drove Lamborghinis. I had penthouse apartments. Um, you know, I could pay for everybody to go in a limo and go to a nightclub and get by. I could do whatever I wanted, really. I'm not anything. I didn't mm -hmm. have, you know, a 24 karat gold yacht or anything, but pretty Within much reason, yeah. the American dream yeah, you know? yeah been on the cover of magazines you know ripped and shredded had all the you know what else do people think they want you know in life they'll be happy if I just had this six-pack if I just had more money or if I just had a nicer car or if I you know had adoring fans like none of it worked long term um, and the at what cost is, is a glaring takeaway from that um, so those, those are kind of the life lessons there. Yeah, and we were talking about that before a little bit and being able to humble ourselves, you know, in recovery. And it gives me goosebumps with you saying that because it's so true, you know, at what cost? And I think that can apply to anything in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. Like any situation we're looking at, at what cost? And people have this, well, at least I did. I don't want to say people, but I had this warped concept of what I thought I needed mm -hmm. and you know coming out here from Canada and wanting to do you know acting and all these things and, and thought these material things is what I needed and really they were bringing me closer and closer to the depths of my addiction and eventually would have killed me yeah. if I had have kept going down that path and I can tell you for myself when I was able to and it was kind of pushed on me but I did it, you know, letting go of those mm -hmm. attachments, mm -hmm. getting rid of things, yeah. getting rid of material things um, was a spiritual rebirth yeah. all in itself. I bet. And not living for those things and, and then realizing that you're pretty much reborn and having to do that inward work, you know, yeah. and discovering who you are and what you want to be without having these little security blankets of what we think is important it's that's just a it's magical a experience yeah. all in itself For so sure. yeah at what cost i'm I in the process that. of doing that right now I've, if anybody's on poshmark you want to check out my poshmark go grab my old stuff so what yeah so that's exactly <laughs> what we're talking about right yeah. like getting rid of those things it's a, that you know material stuff is, is quite a subtle foe as well you know like Alcohol is very socially acceptable. It seems innocent to just have a beer. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, 
material kind of kind of weasels its way in it like does. it's like it's one thing to be hey i've been cleaning sober for five years and now i'm just gonna hit a crack pipe like that's a little extreme right like, right, right whoa yeah. whoa yeah. The, yeah. you know a little different <laughs> yeah. yeah uh just all of a sudden you know but like oh i really need that gucci hat oh, yeah uh, it, it it has a way to, to seep in a little yeah. quicker than other stuff for sure and you just don't notice it as fast mm -hmm. so going into the addiction right and going into your journey into recovery um what was without telling the whole story right <laughs> um what was the low point for you that really was the turning point that made you get sober yeah well of course pride and ego for me you know the 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 guilt and the shame of you know being arrested by the Newport Beach Police Department when I was 20 and I used to be a millionaire and now I'm this tweaked out sucked up scabby faced kid with no money in my pocket and they're like oh look at yourself kid what's wrong with you what are you thinking um you know it was that was just all pride and ego like yeah. wow I, I I was embarrassed you know um embarrassed enough to take a look at myself and I had to realize that it was me that did it it was just for one more wait a minute wait hold on hold on stop just for one more like I have nothing I'm and I'm gross and like I can't even go out in public because I'm such a creature that and just what for one more wow I have a problem yeah. so that was my really but I was being arrested at 20 for manufacturing methamphetamine, looking at seven to 35 years. So it took a really big stakes mm -hmm. to make me look at myself. And the, the scary thing is that, you know, over the past 20 years in, in recovery, out of recovery, um, you know, I've learned that if, if I'm loaded, I don't really have those experiences. I don't think those things until it's too late. Mm -hmm. I don't go, whoa, I'm low until it's too late. I'm, yeah. I can really grit it out to the end. It's not pretty, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you've been off and on, right, for the last 20 years. Now you've got, you know, a significant amount of time under your belt. Luckily more on than off. Right, I've been, right. accumulatively been sober three times longer than I've partied in my life. You yeah. Because I'm that crappy at it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. last very long. <laughs> yeah. So how do you stay sober today what do you do what is your program what is what is your lifestyle like that you're able to maintain your yeah. sobriety um well that's always luckily that is always growing evolving and changing you know we say progress not perfection and a lot of people think that that's like an out not to be perfect you know, progress, not perfection. Oh, I'm never going to be good enough. Yeah. And I used to think the same way, but yeah. I really think the takeaway for that is, is highlighting progress, how important it is to make progress, mm -hmm. you know, and that is always going to be just out of reach, right? Just, just uh, that elusive progress that we're, we're going after. So it kind of changes, but you know, the foundation, this was like a spiritual pit stop for me today. You know, like I got up at four 30 this morning, I was in Venice beach. And uh, I did a little trailer for a feature film of a friend of mine who's actually also in recovery um, that I met years ago before he was in recovery. And he just got a bunch of like an eight picture deal with Lionsgate and he hit me up. He's like, dude, I want you to be in this new movie with me. Congrats. He's like, you helped me out a lot when I was down. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pay it forward. I'm like, what? Okay. So, uh, and then I have a fitness photo shoot right after this. I'm going to squeeze in my, my commitment, uh, pretty much five days a week I, I show up at a 12-step group um, but uh, so this was kind of like a spiritual pit stop for me today crazy busy early yeah LA come here get kind of centered again mm -hmm. and give back and then go do my fancy schmancy stuff um, but yeah it's 12-step meetings on a regular basis reminding myself that self does not recognize self and I need uh, a trusted group of individuals around me to uh, you know my be my little bumper lanes like like bowling mm -hmm. you know yeah, <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. going in the gutter I'm going yeah, in the yeah, gutter again because yeah. <laughs> um, I don't even know when I am you mm -hmm. know um, and working with others you know unity love service um, honesty open-mindedness willingness that kind of stuff so yeah. obviously prayer um, you know, trying in my 
more mature years to which I'm really enjoying is being more of the observer, you know, just kind of watching, letting life unfold instead of uh, having to be the ringleader, you know, is really nice. It's taken a lot of pressure off. It's peaceful, right? Yeah. That that surrendering process yeah. and just being the observer. Yeah. Yeah. And like a lot of really cool magic little moments that you get to pick up on, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Being self-aware. Yeah. and mindful and not so impulsive. Yeah. Yeah. So I know for you with substance abuse and a lot of people, um, there's also mental health stuff that yeah. plays into that as well. So um, what has that journey been like for you? You know, I've, gosh, I mean, you could diagnose me with everything, bipolar, you know, obsessive compulsive, uh, manic depressive, <laughs> you know, I've, I've gone through just about everything from you know, laying in bed for a year straight, peeing in bottles, you know, like that, that kind of depression to, you know, think I'm going to take over the world and mm -hmm. um, pie in the sky stuff and um, codependency, you know, all that stuff I've, I've struggled with, um, you know, but however, I think 12 step work um, works across the board for all that stuff. And I truly believe that alcoholism and mental addiction is a mental health issue. Mm -hmm. You know, it is a disease that's centered in the mind. It's mm -hmm. chronic, progressive, and fatal. Yeah. And, um, you know, when I have that one in line, the other ones seem to get get behind, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I'm an ambassador for the Imperfectly Perfect campaign. I've seen, that. seen that. I love that. That's really cool. I love that. We should do something with you on that. Absolutely. I would yeah. love to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's so good to bring awareness, you know, and the stigma. And, and I see it all the time where people can get really ashamed and down on themselves and stay in their addictions because of their mental health. Yeah. And it's, it's, it needs to just be talked about more, yeah. accepted, normalized. Yeah. You know what I mean? 100%. Like being able to have these open conversations and people to be relatable and go, wow, you know, I, I get what he's saying and I go through the same thing. And being able to take a deep breath and yeah. know like, hey, we all go through stuff. You right. know, we all we all struggle. You know, some some days you don't want to get up and other person's going, Man, I feel that way too. I thought I never thought he would be like that. Right. And now it now I feel better because I hear his story, you yeah. know, and and I just feel like we just need to talk about that more. Absolutely. I think that is healing in itself yep. to be able to be okay with who we are. And and I'm, you know, practice what you preach because I'm all smile and I'm good. And, you know, like I'm not always good. You know, yeah. we all have our stuff just because we're in recovery um, doesn't mean we don't have our stuff right. and we still struggle. And I think that's what's so key is to still discuss and talk about those things constantly about yeah. what we're struggling with yeah. and and that it's okay to not be okay sometimes right. you know what i mean and and how do we get through those things yep. um so yeah i agree with what you're saying connection's a big one because Connection, yeah you know i you know if you're whether you're a drug addict or an alcoholic or you know chronic you know worrier body dysmorphia i don't really think it matters they all when in check want to mass manifest sideways out in other mm -hmm. areas you know yeah. it's like okay i'm just working out for fun it's not about getting a look i got that down you know what i'm just gonna eat you know i'm just gonna eat when i'm hungry okay yeah i'm not all freaked out about how i look and what i'm eating that's good but like oh yeah this gambling thing you know or whatever yeah all these other things pop up around to get you kind of back to crazy yes um so, so true the community is so important mm -hmm. you said it all like we're only as sick as our secrets yeah right get yeah. it out on the table tell all and you know there's a it would be nice to see that change the stigma change you know mm -hmm. in the workplace and yes. family dynamics you know when mm -hmm. people just don't understand like you don't people don't understand that this addiction is a mental issue and and other mental issues you're you're dealing with a certain thought process mm -hmm. you know that can be arrested and, and can go into remission but um, it's not just like put, pick yourself up by your bootstraps, yeah. you know, put your best face forward and like, yeah, yeah. it doesn't just work like that. You no. know, it takes work. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Um, I know you do some other stuff for your spiritual health and, and fitness and well-being, breath works, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about that for anyone Absolutely. who might be interested in what that is and the benefits yeah. of it? Yeah, breath work um, changed my life and it's given me the opportunity to to be of service to so many people. It's 
it's just the gift that keeps on giving it's it's magic and um i've formed a pretty a pretty neat relationship uh with breath work and i still have people that call me to this day to go do it we were doing it out in laguna a couple weeks ago um but just you know we talk about this stuff we talk about letting go we talk about you know getting honest getting vulnerable you know the what you know ego and pride can do to you and um you know non-attachment how great that feels and we talk about it and there's a lot of work that goes into that and practice you know or you can just lay down on your back close your freaking eyes and huff and puff as hard as you can for 20 minutes yeah. and experience all of that you know um and i've seen just incredible things happen from uh rebirths to uh grief and loss trauma cleared um you know angelic embraces heavenly father embraces and self love occur for the first time for somebody i've seen tears i've seen uh, hysterical laughter and it's it's really amazing thing to do if anybody out there hasn't done it yet um i i call it uh transformative breath work what mm. what kind of has come about for me you know and it's funny because you know i'm like buff guy you know hard looking i guess from what people say leading this like spiritual practice that people are, say it's kind of a funny dynamic but i'm kind of like a drill sergeant when i get in there you know and i really like to push people um a little past their comfort zone mm -hmm. to get that release um you'll have to come out and do it i would love to anytime i'm going to hold you to it yeah. i remember listening to a couple of yours um, and at that time, because that was a couple years ago, I didn't really know a lot about it. Mm. And I would walk by and go, what is going on in here? <laughs> People just like screaming hysterically. Yeah. And yeah, they would always come out and, and just, whew, they look like they had just had the best therapy session yeah. and, and vacation and sometimes like a weight had been lifted. If they're willing to do a little bit do of the work. work. Yeah. Do. And I, I, you know what, that's just so true with everything. You know, it's like if you're willing to do the work, you can have the most amazing results. Yeah, you like know? you, like with your old sponsor. Yeah. Like, yeah, I wanna like get sober, but not if it means I have to stop working out. Right, right, right. There's, we always have some level we of have resistance. Those, right? Yeah, that level of resistance, yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much for coming. My this pleasure. has been amazing. I wanted to go to Adrian over there. Um, I can't see what she's doing. She's, she's giving us the peace sign. She's giving us a peace sign. Okay, we were just checking on things over there. So I wanted to ask you, and this on kind of a funny, different note. Okay. What is something unique about you that people don't know about? Hmm. Let's <laughs> see. Unique about me. You know, the, I, I don't, I'm pretty much like all cards on the table kind of guy. All cards on the I table. I mean, I hate to say it, but okay. like, I fart a lot. You like, fart a lot. There like we go. <laughs> around, around people that I don't even know. Really? Yeah. So that's maybe what it it's was. It's kind of like a sneeze or a uh -huh. burp, uh -huh. I feel like. You know? Okay. She's got to let it fly. Okay, good, good to know. Good to know. <laughs> people might not know that about me. <laughs> if you have not, if you hung out with me, you definitely know definitely that. Definitely know. Okay, if you know, you know. <laughs> All right, cool. And then for your future, your goals, your, your passion, your purpose, what drives you, when you look ahead, let's say five years from now, 10 years from now, where do you see yourself emotionally, spiritually, and career-wise? Well, you know, we talked a little bit about that, just being the observer, right? Just allowing life to happen um, to you and for you, right? Um, so I'd really like to lean into that more and more. Uh, all the best things in my life have happened outside of my own best ideas mm -hmm. you know I've, i don't think i've ever had one of those amazing ideas the get rich quick scheme or whatever gonna change the world idea and it and it and it worked the the stuff that hit the stuff that was iconic life-changing successful were things that were handed to me outside of my own comprehension you know mm -hmm. so staying open to that you know um and eagerly just awaiting for what the universe has in store for me, you mm -hmm. know, I think is a nice place to be. Eagerly waiting for what the universe has in store. Being useful, I, I do know, I can tell you that feeling useful, feeling effective, um, 
is the, my biggest reward. You know, I like, I love feeling useful to others uh, and, and or knowing that I am part of a, of a, a team and a higher calling, you know, and building that team. I like to build that team. I like to be a part of it, a worker amongst workers, they call it. Um, but, you know, I like, uh, you know, Jordan Peterson. You follow him at all? Mm -mm. It talks about happiness. Mm -hmm. Happiness comes and goes, right? Happiness is like water. You can't grasp it, attain it, hold it. It's going to come and go. So the goal in life never really should be to be happy because that's going to come and go. But the goal should be to be effective and useful. Um, and if you can do that in your home, then you can do that in your town. And if you can do that in your town, you can do it in your city. And if you can do it in your city, you can do it in your state and yeah. potentially the world at large, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think just keeping it small and letting that uh, constructive interference grow outward. Mm. Very well said. <laughs> well, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you guys for watching. He's amazing, as we <laughs> all know. Not, all right. I have my moments. Have a good we day. We all do. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much. Oh, 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 oh. No, oh, no, no. No.